Look at that. Don't look at that. Like, oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Well, that's one way to deal with patience. But further, you guys tagged me in a lot and you actually had a lot of differing opinions on this and wanted to get my take. Half of you guys were actually kind of upset about this, saying this doctor shouldn't be talking to his patients like that. And that's so unprofessional of him. And then the other half was kind of like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. And actually in the comments, we have the other half here. So someone said, nothing better than having chill patients you can mess around with. And someone said, not gonna lie, a doctor that gets real with me like this is the best. And so what are my thoughts on this situation? You know, being a doctor and dealing with patients on a daily basis. Well, I would say that there is a fine line between doing this the right way and the wrong way. And it seems like in this case, he did it the right way. He was reading the energy of the family. He was having fun. They were making fun of her. He's making fun of her fun. It's part of the whole patient bonding experience. I mean, when you come into my office and you're working with me, you're part of the family now, okay? And and our, the way we do things, our personality, that type of vibe is the vibe that I want with my patients. Now, that being said, I think as a doctor, we learn to read people really, really well. Well, we're, we're like the ultimate detectors of vibe, I guess you could say. Now there is types though that I say that some doctors can't read the room very good and then, and if they do that with another patient that maybe not be that type of person, they're gonna be in for a different type of social media experience. And I think if you can find a way to have that experience with your patients and make them more comfortable and they're comfortable with you because a patient that's a friend is the best patient there is. So I hope that helps and don't take life so seriously, okay? Okay, you guys tag me in this a ton so apparently you guys love it when I do these videos. What is okay? So looks like we have an impacted wisdom teeth there. He put in some of the uh, numbing medicine. Um, obviously, they have to kind of remove the area of the tissue where that wisdom tooth is hidden in there. So next up from here, normally you kind of drill that tooth in half and you break it apart if you can. Okay, so it looks like they're kind of getting rid of the bone around the tooth that could be locking it in, um, kind of revealing some more area for them to get the forceps on, which is what we pulled. Okay, it looks like they're just cutting the crown off completely. Um, that happens sometimes too, where you just kind of get it off in two pieces, get the top part out first. Normally you would split the root from there, but it looks like this is a single root. So you just kind of dive in and you pop it out cleaning up the area it looks like they're putting in a little bit of uh, The bone material there that will heal up into some bone later and then suturing it up Okay, what are we doing now two weeks later? Okay, so he's all healed up now Okay, we're going back in with an oh, they're getting the filling done on that one Okay, so normally they would probably do this at the same time probably before they got the wisdom tooth out while it was all open and ready um, but sure enough here, they're doing it with the band and loop there for the edge. They're cleaning it up, getting some curing stuff in there. We do this in layers because we don't want it to shrink and compact. So if you do it in small layers over time, it's a little more sturdy. Filling it up, looking good here. Okay, yeah, getting some of the anatomy in there. That little metal band just lets the glue not leak out the backside there. And those are all real instruments, a condenser item and the blue light cures it, polishing paste up. So now my man has a perfectly good tooth and no wisdom tooth anymore. Oh, now they gotta go, of course. You gotta whiten your teeth at the end. What am I talking about? I put the little protective gel on there. We're gonna throw the whitening on there. And now he truly is good to go. Post wisdom teeth remover. Pineapple juice definitely didn't work on that one. But for real though, Bentist, what is going on here? And why does her face look like a Picasso painting of a chipmunk? Well, obviously she got her wisdom teeth out. And most of the time we don't have that much swelling, but some people have teeth that are so impacted and they react really, really bad. In her case, you can see that she really had a reaction to this. She swelled up a ton and also had what we call a hematoma, where we had a lot of blood pooling in the area. You see, most of the time after getting your wisdom teeth out, you recover in about three to four days for most people. But in this case, it can take up to two weeks for some people that have really bad reactions. You also want to make sure that you're not having any complications like dry socket where the clot gets removed in the back where those extraction sites are. A couple things that can cause this is one, the hematoma she had, two, if she had an infection. So you want to make sure that you have your doctor take a look and make sure you're not infected. But even though her face looks crazy and she had to go through all this, I still highly recommend getting your wisdom teeth out. People don't realize, but impacted wisdom teeth are like ticking time bombs. It's not if they're going to cause a problem, it's when. You see what happens is food and gunk will travel up underneath and eventually get to that impacted wisdom teeth and can cause an infection, a cavity, and everything will happen until one day you wake up with massive pain. In fact, your face looks a lot like she did here after getting her wisdom teeth taken out, except for it's a massive infection. The craziest part is that infection can actually spread to the cavernous sinus and lead to your brain 
actually killing you. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it either until I was in hospital rotations and saw this time and time again where people had massive infections from their wisdom teeth and were in a ton of pain. So even if you have to go through two weeks of miserableness to get your wisdom teeth out, it's totally worth it. Hope that helps. Talking to the moon. Now you talk about baby teeth, that is a baby tooth. And it sounds like some of you guys in the comments has actually had this before. Keo Lim said, I'm born with a natal tooth. They say that it actually brings good luck in life and I struggle a lot so hard for me, but I'm still standing. Guess I'm lucky. What is going on? Well, this is called a natal tooth, which actually means the tooth is fully in when you're born. They call neonatal tooth teeth that come in within the first month, but a natal tooth is literally in there the second that you're born. Now there's a lot of reasons why you get these things out. And as you can see, it came out super easy and that's because natal tooth are normally not formed in the root area only the top is formed and normally it's a lot of genetic issues there too so it just literally you can just kind of wiggle it and come out so one of the main reasons why we take these out is because we don't want them falling and the baby aspirating or even swallowing them etc etc at night because bad things can happen there and another big one that probably the moms out there kind of know of is you don't want something sharp when you're doing breastfeeding I'm just gonna say it's probably painful a lot of people think that natal teeth are actually extra teeth or supernumeraries when only actually 10% of these are found to be supernumeraries. So sometimes they are your normal baby tooth and you could be down one baby tooth. But luckily it's not that big a deal because your baby tooth teeth do fall out and the permanent teeth are right there behind. Them. So I suggest if you do have one of these really early in your babies, probably just go ahead and get it out so you're not having any issues at all. And most of the time it's not going to be a big deal in the future either. I hope that helps. You know that I want one of these. Ah! My cheeks! And it seems like some of you guys in the comments agree. One person said, throw back to the time my braces cut a hole in my mouth and I started bleeding out of my mouth like a character in a horror movie that just got killed. That's aggressive. And another person said, or when you talk and it hooks your cheek, it's the worst. Well, Frodo Bentis, what am I going to do to make sure that these things don't cut up my cheeks when I get braces? Well, there is actually a couple things that you can do. So obviously the first thing that you can do is when you get your braces on, you're going to be given some dental wax, okay? So a lot of the areas with hooks or different things on it will poke you a little bit more. So I mean, you can just roll up a ball of wax and you can put it on the area that causes that discomfort to stop it from sticking and poking. Another thing you can get is what we call comfort covers. You can find these on Amazon or wherever else, but basically they're a little plastic railing that can go along the line of the braces and kind of pad the entire mouth from side to side. Now, the problem is, is if your teeth are like, you know, crazy and they're all up over the place, you're going to be having a hard time because that comfort cover won't fit there because they're all there. But when your teeth are a little more lined up, works great. Another thing you can do is if you do get these sores and cuts on your cheek, well, you can actually rinse your mouth out with warm salt water. This will disinfect the area and cause it to heal a lot quicker. And lastly, just use your genetics to your advantage. You see, your mouth is really good at figuring out what to do to make sure it's comfortable. And over time, your stuff will thicken up and your skin inside your lips will heal a lot quicker. I've had this racket on for over a year now and the area here is a lot tougher because it doesn't want to get cut up all the time by that bracket. So in a couple weeks, your body's tissue is gonna get used to it. It's gonna toughen up and you're not gonna have those issues anymore and then you're gonna be on your path to that straight Hollywood smile. Hope that helps. You ever wondered why brushing your teeth makes everything taste like sh I have, well, and it's terrible. A pretty solid explanation for there this. Is. You see, your tongue is covered in proteins mm -hmm. that act as receptors for taste. And we actually have five of those receptors that give you bitter, salty, sweet, sour, and funny enough, umami, which you probably haven't heard of. It's from the flavors of MSG. That's what umami is. But there's one sneaky ingredient Ooh. in toothpaste called SLS. Sodium SLS oral interferes sulfate. It's with the proteins on your tongue. This impairs your ability to taste sweet flavors, replacing them with an unpleasant bitter, bitter sensation. sensation. And the crazy part is this isn't a majority of toothpaste. That's why, in fact, when we're creating our new toothpaste, we are getting rid of SLS, meaning you'll be able to drink orange juice anytime you want without any flavor changes. To fix your jaw. Okay, let's try. I look stupid. I think I broke my- <laughs> That's not good. No, but for real, but you literally should never move your jaw in a lateral way. See, your lower jaw is a ball and socket joint that moves up and down. It does have some lateral side to side, but if you go too far, bad things can happen. And by bad things, I mean this part, the little condyle, can snap in half. Also, you can stretch out the ligaments holding it in place, and then if they get too loose, you're gonna end up with some clicks and pops and some TMJ issues like, nah, this girl had here. Now, if you 
actually have a jaw issue, like a lock jaw, you actually want to push down on the back teeth and rotate it to try and pop it back into place. Side to side, it's probably not going to help you in that case. Hope that helps. is going to regret this so much in five years. As you guys know, when you go to somewhere like Turkey to get veneers, they don't actually give you veneers. You see, these are called crown preps, not veneers. You see, when you get veneers, they just shave a top layer off your teeth, just a tiny bit, and they put kind of an outer shell onto your teeth. That's what a veneer is. If you look at his teeth, these are actually crown preps. They shave all the way around the tooth, getting rid of like 50% of your tooth to put a cap over the whole thing. People go over to different countries to get this done because it's cheaper and they think they're getting a good result but really they're just ruining their teeth forever not only are his teeth damaged he's gonna have much more sensitivity and pain throughout the years he's gonna have to get his crowns redone every 10 years that is if they don't get decayed and fall out and more than likely by the time he's older he's gonna have to go into full dentures now one thing i will take away from this is that back in the day you guys had no idea about this but i've taught you so well that now in the comments you guys are actually sounding off some actually knowledge here i mean everybody's commenting why would you ruin your teeth bro's gonna regret this in five years tooth pain up tooth strength down so at least i'm educating some of you guys on this stuff realistically in the end he could have just gotten braces and straightened his teeth and then gotten some whining and been just fine and saved all of his teeth for his entire life the only time i recommend getting veneers is if you just absolutely don't want to go into braces or if you hate the shape of your teeth because i can straighten up your teeth but i can't change the shape but just please don't do this please Autumn, no! I literally just made a video congratulating you on getting your braces off and you're already back in them. I'm disappointed. And actually did a little bit of digging to see why she had to get braces again. And I went into the comments and said, why do you have braces again? And she said, I broke my permanent retainer. And this is why we have to have a discussion. You see, actually in my office, I tend to tell people not to get permanent retainers. First, before we get into the mystery of the permanent retainers, we have to talk about what a retainer is and what its function is. Well, obviously you guys know it keeps your teeth straight, but why? Well, you see, everybody's teeth sits in the bone and there's all these thousands of little bungee cords that hold that tooth into the bone. And if your tooth is turned sideways and I turn that tooth straight, those bungee cords stretch along with it. And if you get out of braces and you don't wear your retainer, <laughs> It shoots it right back and you end up having to go back into braces if you don't wear your retainer. Now in her case, she got a little bit of the bad end of the stick because she had what we call a permanent retainer or other people call it a permanent retainer. I call it a bonded retainer. You see, because they're just bonded on there with a little bit of glue and inevitably you're going to bite into an apple, you're going to eat something and one of those little teeth are going to break off and you're not going to know that your retainer is not well retaining. And so slowly but surely that tooth is going to shift and it's going to shift and it's going to shift until it shifts so much that you notice it and then you come back into us and we say well it's moved too much i can't do anything about it unless you want to go back into braces we can straighten it back up another big reason why i don't like permanent retainers is because well they are right behind your teeth and you don't floss very good because you got well a big metal bar behind them and so now you have trouble flossing food gunk everything builds up and from what we've seen over the years is now that people are getting older with these permanent retainers they're having a lot of gum resorption and bone loss back there on the teeth because of these things now there are certain times that you absolutely need these bonded retainers like if you had a big gap between your two front teeth well those will shoot open really quickly and so a lot of the times you have to build a bond retainer on the back of your two front teeth to help keep those guys closed but in our office we very rarely put it on the lower unless you absolutely ask for it i would much rather you wear a clear aligner type retainer than over the years those bungee cords that are stretched get looser and looser and looser and you have to wear your retainer less and less and when you're 10 15 years out you can probably wear it once a month and be just fine so wear your retainers don't go back into braces and i would highly suggest not getting a permanent retainer just wear your retainers and be responsible